Well, today's hearing in the House was a lot of things, but among them, it was a very bad day for the media and their current stable of former officials who feed them stories off the record. During the hearing, James Comey said that a major New York Times story claiming that Donald Trump's campaign aides repeatedly met with Russian intelligence was full of falsehoods. The New York Times wrote an article that suggested that the uh, Trump campaign was colluding with the Russians. And so the American people can understand this. That report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, in the main, it was not true. The people talking about it often don't really know what's going on. And those of us who actually know what's going on are not talking about it. And we don't call the press to say, hey, you got that thing wrong about this sensitive topic. Wow, it was weird. The New York Times it was full of falsehoods. That's so strange. Meanwhile, over at CNN, one of their analysts was claiming that Comey would refute Trump's claim that he was not under FBI investigation. He will dispute that he ever assured the president that he was uh, not under any kind of investigation. Keep in mind, we know that for sure because it was from an unnamed source of impeachable integrity, except it turned out to be a lie. Oops. Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill, and he joins us tonight. So, look, everybody in the press uses anonymous sources. I have a lot. But you got to be really careful because these people have, by definition, an agenda, and they're hiding behind the cloak of anonymity. And you can't just run with what they say because you're going to get burned, as these guys just were. But they're not embarrassed. That's correct, Tucker. When you go ahead with unnamed sources, as you said, you don't know about their agenda. They may be lying about the access they have to the person, right. like Comey just said, as well. So this is what we've seen now for five months. Every bombshell that has involved Trump and Russia has been a story with no named sources whatsoever. And people at home don't know what to make of what's true and what's not. And in CNN's case, this shows really what happens when you go ahead. In this case, it was only one unnamed source and go on national television and talk about it as if it's fact and then other publications and outlets pick it up as if it was walked down exactly. a mountain and it's gospel as well. See, the problem is everyone's lying right now. Washington is a hall of mirrors. It's very hard to know what's true. I experience this every single day. Mm -hmm. And if you go into covering a story knowing what the answer is, you're going to get burned and you're going to get used. These guys all think they know what they're going to find, so anything that confirms their pre-existing suspicions, they just go with. I think Comey had the best analogy where he said, it's like feeding seagulls at the shore. I grew up at the Jersey Shore. I've seen this. You throw a crumb in the air and two seagulls come. You throw another and 50 come. And they don't even know what they're eating. And it's right. the same thing with the press. You throw up something, the New York Times and the Washington Post reports it and everybody else comes in. They don't care what it is. They just love the narrative too much. But to the New York Times, you mentioned them before. They have followed up since as far as their story being wrong on February 14th. This is what they say. Quote, the original sources could not be reached after Mr. Comey these remarks. Wait a minute. Four sources, senior people, suddenly no one can find them. They don't want to go on the record or off the record in this case to confirm that the story was true or not, that Comey yeah. said was BS. That's interesting, Tucker. What's interesting is when you have people covering this who are covering it in terms of the personalities and the moral status of the people involved, not really as an adult series of events, which it is. There was an exchange on MSNBC today that really kind of said it all, as far as I'm concerned. This is one of their anchors responding to Donald Trump Jr.'s tweet about the hearings. Watch this. For, you know, a guy who kills baby elephants for kicks to be giving James Comey a lesson in character and strength of character is rich at best and pathetic at worst. So in other words, you're a bad person. Shut up. That's not really journalism, is it? That is a perfect example of what I've been talking about in terms of this need for people to be, in terms of this, a host in Nicole Wallace, whose ratings are horrible right now, she has a new show at 4 o'clock, to be as shocking, as melodramatic as possible. So then we're talking about it on other shows or it goes on to other publications and it goes viral. So that's now the goal, to go as viral as possible. But one more point, Tucker, if, if you don't mind, because I was disappointed in the Senate Intelligence Committee today, who I thought asked good questions for the most part. But there was one that the American public was begging to be asked, and that was, Mr. Comey, when you had that private dinner at the White House and dessert was yeah. served, was two scoops of ice cream served to Donald Trump? Did you only get one, and did you get the flavor you requested? Yeah, what does he was like? Does he like his steak rare or well done? You know, th those are the questions. I agree, Joe. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Thank Great you. Great to see you. Good to see you.